Hello. Oh, we're a little late tonight, huh? It's going to be late tonight, and it's probably, maybe, going to be late tomorrow night when we do our historic hunker down at home alone together. Happy holidays. Yeah, well, you know, I was very busy these past few days, and I will be busy through tomorrow as well. Um, beside the usual stuff, I am a part of the licensing and ordination team of my denomination. And so I was spending time talking with uh, candidates for the ministerial program on their progress toward being unity ministers. And it was great fun, and yet it certainly did take a bite of my time today. And all week, including tomorrow. So I invite you to just kind of roll with that. I'm so glad you're with me whatever time it is. And I really would like to invite you to relax with me tonight. Sit back, put your feet up, give yourself something cozy to drink. Maybe it's coffee or tea or whatever. And look around, our, how are you doing? Are you handling the home alone together time? Are you handling the news and the numbers and the questions? And can you be okay to do as Jesus said and become as a little child? Hmm. Oh, I like to think back of those little child moments when I was a kid. We had some great blessings. We had blessings that your family may or may not have had. What we, we didn't have, like, tons of money, but we had something that's important to every family, and that's love. My parents did not only love each other, they liked each other. They did. I would catch those two sometimes. I would go to bed at night, and then you'd hear this ruckus out in the other room, and it would be my parents chasing each other around the house, being silly and sometimes naked. Now, they didn't know that we weren't sound asleep in our beds. But they just were, my parents were great. I lived the life of leave it to Beaver and, and Father Knows Best and the Danny Thomas Show and, you know, all those times that were very different. I know a lot of people will say, oh, no. The times then were the same as they are now, only you hear about it now. I am here to witness to the fact that, no, that's not so. I was there. Remember last night we talked about the importance of family and, and being together and uh, how, how that gives us a sense of love and security. Now, last time we talked about giving. It was Giving Tuesday. Did you give? If you did, I'm so sorry. You missed out. I love every opportunity to give. Now, giving is tricky. You want to give, first of all, not because you want to get, because we know with the law of circulation, if you give freely, you will receive freely. But no, to give freely, because it just feels so darn good. We want to not judge anyone as lesser or poorer than we, because we give to them. We give with joy because we have... And now they have. Do you want to feel rich? Go do some serious giving. 
I did share stories yesterday about how to do that, and I hope you listen. And you don't need my stories. You can give in any of thousands of countless ways. But now that we've talked about giving, I'd like to talk a little about receiving. Now, last night we talked very briefly about my favorite gift of all time, which was a case of 7-Up soda. 7-Up in case, I, I don't know if they still make it or not because I don't drink soda much, but 7-Up was like the equivalent in those days of Sprite. Only it was much better because, after all, it was back in the day, right? <laughs> and it came in glass bottles which were easily returned and you got two cents each if you brought them back you know i used to camp at hamanessa at state park back in the day you could camp there all summer you would put in your bid for your campsite and it had to be in by the by december 31st i think and then they would start the drawings in january or february so you put in three choices and you got whatever choice you made. This was not fancy schmancy. It's not like we had some kind of big old shiny camper. We had a rather older uh, camper. But you know what? It was just big enough for us and our love. Well, until the day my dad bought a flippin' what do they call that army surplus tent for us to sleep in that's another night i'll go there another day i'm not going there tonight but i want to ask you what do you want to receive this year for christmas it's a trick question i want you to first of all exclude anything for the good of all humanity anything about our family or peace or God. I want to talk about the child within you. That little part of us that we forgot somewhere along the way. What if you were to write a letter to Santa tonight? What would you write? What would you ask for? Would your request be possible or outrageous? Would it be doable? Or would it be something only Santa could do? If there's any children in the room, I invite you to uh, send them off to play. You want to talk a little bit about Santa Claus. First of all, we were lied to about Santa Claus. The image we have of him, a jolly old elf, flying down chimneys, dropping off things for kids. That addresses our lower self, not our higher self. You have to bear with me a minute. It said my battery is going down, but I know I charged my battery and I've got my little auxiliary battery working here. So if I drop out, ooh, that would be so sad, especially tonight because I want to keep on keeping on and battery's charged, I'm charged. So let's just know it's going to hold out. That'll be a Christmas miracle. But the Santa Claus that Samuel Clemens created in the goodness of his heart, a round jolly old elf with a sleigh and miniature reindeer and the ability to pop down the chimney, even if he didn't have a chimney, he'd find a way to leave presents under your tree. That's a lovely story. But if we sh share this story with our children, we share there something that is 
a fantasy and an illusion. It's kind of sad because you see, in reality, Santa is real. The spirit of Christmas, St. Nicholas, is real. I remember when I was a kid, <laughs> there was, uh, we'd go to my grandparents' house. It was on the corner of East and Pleasant Street in New Britain, Connecticut. If you looked out of the window that faced the street, well, it faced the side, the street that ran across it, there was a jeweler. It was called Palumbo's Jeweler. And Palumbo's Jeweler always had a string of Christmas lights, well, at least at Christmas time, covering the canopy to the, to the entry. And my grandmother, we went there, the whole family, to have Christmas Eve dinner. It was so fun. But you know what? As I think back to that, I don't think about the presents. I think about the presents. The presents of love and family and food and fun and excitement and anticipation. Well, my grandmother would call us over to our little makeshift table. It was made from two sawhorses and a piece of wood my grandfather found somewhere. And we had a little, little benches that we sat on. And she'd say, look, look, there's Santa. Look, look. And she'd point up to the sky and she'd go, didn't you see him? I'll bet if I could go to that window today, and if Palumbo's is still there, and if they still keep that string of lights out there, I could look and I could know that Santa just came by. You see, that feeling, that's the real Santa. That's the real spirit of Christmas. But it is based on a real being, a real human being, a spiritual being having a human experience. He was a bishop. So right there, the clothing of St. Nicholas would typically be more like a bishop than a jolly old elf. That's okay. Santa, the true spirit of Christmas, doesn't care. But the scandal of St. Nicholas is the fact that it was made to be a, a, a provider of whatever someone wants. You ask for Santa and you'll get it. You have to be nice. You can't be naughty. If you're naughty, you don't get it. If you're nice, you do. How many times have we felt naughty. We didn't measure up somehow, intentionally or unintentionally. And then we had the guilt. Did you ever wonder when you opened your stocking if you would maybe find a lump of coal in it because you were naughty? I feared that when I was a kid. I really did. And they do sell, they sell lumps of coal to put in kids' stockings. Some of the lumps of coal are actual candy, and some are actual lumps of coal. What a sad way to scare a child and destroy the spirit of Christmas. You see, when we attune ourselves to God, to spirit, to the beauty and the joy that Jesus gave, that he came, that Christ came, to give us an amazing gift, a teaching, a teaching. See, we had the letter of the law about how to live, but Jesus brought the heart of the law. We had the how, Jesus brought the why. Now he didn't bring it that night that it is said that angels sang in the sky and shepherds watch. He brought it through a teaching that has come down over 2,000 years, a teaching that is so simple and so beautiful 
And all we have to do is follow it. Can you be a child tonight? Can you be a child for the rest of the holiday season? Can you overcome news and fear and doubt and sadness and look at the beauty? Look at the beauty of the promise. In case you're not aware of it, the word gospel means good news. And there is good news. We are all beautiful, beloved children of God. So let's get back to Santa Claus, okay? Saint Nicholas. Saint Nicholas, a bishop, was considered a saint for one of the, one of, I'm sure for many things, one of which was his charity and compassion for the poor. He didn't think about what he was going to get for Christmas. He thought about what he could give. Oh yeah, we're back to last night. Yet, you see, giving is a part of a cycle. And the other part of the cycle is receiving. When we give a gift, we receive in return the joy that comes from the person that receives the gift. Doesn't have to be a big gift. Doesn't have to be a fancy gift. So what if this year you say that you're always feeling like a kid? What would the kid in you like this Christmas? No, I warned you. Nothing about peace and love and universal brotherhood? No. What does the child within you, what little toy or joy, it doesn't have to be big, you know? What would you just love to find under your tree? As we matured, matured, that's what I say. I may grow up, but I'll never grow old. What would you love to find under your Christmas tree? Can you be open to receive? I hope you can. I'd like to share a few Christmas joys with you. Joy comes in many forms and sizes. This one came in a little book. I can't even tell you how long it's been in my life. There we go. Barbie doll dressed up in a beautiful Christmas dress. I can see that now. You know, a friend of mine that I used to work with what she would have loved to have had more than anything in the world was a game. It was a board game. I'll bet you never heard of it. It was called Hey Mr. Taxi Cab. And she wanted that gift so much. And Christmas came. And Christmas left. And she did not get her Mr. T hey, Mr. Taxi uh, Driver, Taxi Cab Book, Game, whatever it was. We don't always get what we want. She grew up and managed. I got to tell you, in all honesty, after she told me that story, I tried over and over again to find that game. You happen to have an old Hey, Mr. Taxi Cab gift uh, uh, game out there. I would gladly buy it for you at a very reasonable price that I could bless my friend with such a gift. Let the child in you be open to receive your gift and to know that as you ask, so shall you receive. Okay, so this little book, I got it from Barnes & Noble, but I can't tell you how. I can't tell you when. It's been in my life so long. Don't you just love Barnes & Noble at Christmas time? 
you know, you can look for all kinds of wonderful, exciting gifts and toys. You can take a book, sit in one of their cushy chairs, have a cup of coffee or tea, and enjoy it. This little book, which I got at a Barnes & Noble, to me, is a huge blessing. It is called, and I'm going to share a little bit of this with you over the coming days. But this one is called Christmas Joys. It's 432 things to do for yourself and others that might make this the best Christmas ever. Now, when you hear the words best Christmas ever, does the first thought that comes to you being, not this one, not when I can't go see my family, not when the money's too tight, not when there's a deadly disease out there, not when our government's in an upheaval, you and I can work individually and collectively to create what can possibly be the best Christmas ever. How? Be open. Be open to receive. You know, what if you had a box, a bunch of boxes under your Christmas tree and when you went to open them, each one had an amazing memory. Man, in that moment, wouldn't that be the best Christmas ever? So let's share a few Christmas joys. Not many, just a few, because this is like something that is rich and sweet and wonderful and you want it to last. You know, we have to learn how to make the good things last in our lives. Not to see them there and gorge the, ourselves on the whole thing and then it's gone. What if we savor precious little bits of joy at a time? Some of the joys we can have for ourselves some we can give to others. Okay. Shall we start on page one? Because that's a wonderful place to start a book. This one says, Be the first to wish everyone you meet a Merry Christmas. Well, over the past five years, that's been somewhat politicized. Oh, don't say happy holidays. You're supposed to be saying Merry Christmas. Really? What about Happy Hanukkah? Is it not the same God that we worship, only seen from a different perspective? We are not, the Christians are not the only faith to celebrate this season. As a matter of fact, this season, and I think we talked about it a little before, is all about the coming of light. See, it's we're going into the darkest, the darkest of nights. December 31st, the 21st being the longest night of the year. But then we start to come into the light again. And we are all celebrating together. You know, if you don't know much about Hanukkah, or other faiths that are celebrating at this time, I invite you to learn about them. Hey, you know what? First night of Hanukkah, I could wait and tell you, Lynn, but I'll tell you now because you want to have a little time to prepare. Okay? The first night of Hanukkah, we always have potato pancakes, otherwise known as latkes to some of you. That's that's got to be our Hanukkah beginning. And Hanukkah goes on, you know what? I'm going to lock it. Lock it and pocket. 
we'll share more about Hanukkah when Hanukkah comes. Meantime, get yourself some flour and some salt and pepper and some potatoes and a grater and some eggs and maybe soon we'll make some latkes. We shall see what spirit opens up. Okay. How about if we said, be the first to wish everyone you meet a happy Hanukkah, a Merry Christmas, and everything else we can think of. It is very early this year, Cheryl, but are you getting yourself lined up for some delicious, crispy, wonderful potato pancakes, latkes? What will you have with them? Will you have applesauce? Will you have cottage cheese? That's the way we eat them in my family. Butter and cottage cheese. Can't go wrong. Okay. How about, now this one I'm kind of, neat, 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 neat. buy a pair of red flannel pajamas that you wear only on Christmas Eve. Well, I'm going to be real honest. I'm a very practical and prudent person. So the thought of wearing a pair of pajamas only one night a year, hmm, and being 75 years old, hmm, how many times would I wear those pajamas? Even if I lived 30 more years, I don't know about that in this world, but even if I did, I'd only wear the pajamas 30 times. So I have a solution to that. Buy yourselves now! A special pair set of, of Christmas pajamas and wear them for the season and put them away until Thanksgiving or December 1st or 2nd next year and then wear them. Wearing them all winter is great. You could get a new pair every year. Or in my frugality, you can get them and put them away. <laughs> So you have something to really look forward to opening up next year to wear those. I'm a real sentimental fool, which you will see in the coming weeks. What about taking the family to see a small town parade? Now, in my area, we don't do the small time parade thing because they don't have one. But I did notice in our local newspaper that they are having a little drive around where different neighborhoods have lights. So the idea is you drive around to the different neighborhoods that have lights and you write down uh, who you, which one you thought was best and they actually get a prize. Man, driving around and looking at Christmas lights, it's so special. There was a time when I had a brilliant idea that I never got to manifest. So I'm gonna give it to you. And maybe you can use it, and maybe you wish not to. But I always wanted to find some really special candy canes and maybe even put a gold bow on them and bring them out with me as I drove around to, uh, to look at the lights. And when I found a house that had superb lights to knock on their door and award them one of my special candy canes with the bow, Good idea, huh? So, you can give it a try. I still remember driving around. Uh, one time I used to work in Wallingford, and I found this street that I would come home from work before I found the shortcut. <laughs> but this one particular street had the most amazing Christmas lights. And at that time, my mom was still with us, and she still had probably 85% of her mind and memory. And Sammy and I went and picked her up at the rest home and we drove her around through those lights and we sang Christmas carols. And you know what? It cost a gallon or two of gas and it gave a memory that will warm my heart forever. Here's one that I am committed to follow. And don't misunderstand me, it says, don't count calories from December 15th through January 2nd. I don't count calories anyway, 
but I do tend to deny myself from time to time. You know what? As long as it's legal and moral, I am going to enjoy whatever I want for those two weeks. It's all here to bring us Christmas joy. This one, which I'm going to stop here because I'm over time, but I just hate stopping. This one says, never select a Christmas tree after dark. Well, um, many, many years ago, my uh, ex-husband, husband at the time, uh, was supposed to bring home a Christmas tree. It was time. I was home with the kids. He was supposed to pick it up on the way home, but he decided to go out and head to a little party before he came home. And when he came home, somebody had a hissy fit. And he went out to cut a Christmas tree. And he came back. And I don't know if you know what a princess pine is. <laughs> it is a scraggly excuse for a Christmas tree. <laughs> mostly branches and little puffs of pine needles. But you know what? We dressed that tree up. And I'm sure the kids thought that was as grand as any Christmas tree ever was. So I'm going to close on that little piece for tonight. It doesn't have to be perfect to be the very perfect Christmas ever. Okay? It's up to us. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Again, it may be late. I don't know how much, uh, how late because um, I don't know what time my meetings are going to be over tomorrow. But uh, do check it out because we're going to have another good time. You take care. God bless. Happy holidays.